What is going on YouTube? It's Jake, aka StarCoding, coming at you with another video where we're talking about computer science. Today we're taking another look into the past. We're looking at Windows PowerShell and I guess something called uh, Monad, Microsoft Monad. That's what it was beforehand. We're going to look at how this language of PowerShell came to be and what its use case is. So let's take a closer look at this. Okay, so here we go. We have the Monad Manifesto, guys, written in 2002 by our boy Jeffrey Snover. Uh, I know we're talking about PowerShell and how PowerShell came to be. And so why are we looking at this Monad Manifesto? Well, we're talking about a platform for administrative automation here. Great stuff. Um, I'm sure anyone that's in an IT position, a network engineer position, anything that's you know, behind the scenes, organizing a organization definitely has used some automation, whether it be in batch scripts or bash scripts, uh, if you're a Linux user. And this is the, the birth of another programming language that's going to be doing that same thing, administrative automation and scripting language. Uh, and we're going to do that by leveraging the .NET platform. Anyone in the chat? A C Sharp developer, y'all know what .NET is all about. It's those great objects that you can interact with um, on the Microsoft platform. Great stuff. I think there is there more to .NET than just leveraging Microsoft objects. There probably is, but when I hear .NET, I just think of interacting with Windows. Great stuff. Uh, and you're going to realize that it's going to even say here that this is not a Windows PowerShell white paper. This is the original Monad Manifesto, which articulated the long-term vision and started the development effort, which became PowerShell. So uh, PowerShell, I don't think was an idea at this time in 2002. I think that there was, I know that Microsoft um, PowerShell launched in 2007. I think this project just became wrapped up and they're like, you know what, we're gonna call it PowerShell. Uh, I could be wrong on that. The actual like way that PowerShell came to be and how Monad became not to be is kind of still a mystery to me. But what I do know is that this paper describes perfectly why you would want to use PowerShell and really what this language has to offer for the users that are using it. So I thought it was interesting. We're going to look at it real quick. We're not going to dive too much into it. We're going to look at the problems and we're going to look at the valued uh, what the value adds are. There's a bunch of things in here as well as how the language works under the hood, but uh, we're not going to go into that detail because just from a video standpoint, you know, we want to we want to get the problems and the values out of this stuff. So we have some problems here. Okay, when it comes to using Windows, we have administrators using GUI tools, and we have system programmers using C, C++, and C Sharp. So how are we going to bridge this gap that's becoming in uh, Microsoft Windows operating systems. You know, with Linux users and partial Mac users probably don't have to deal with this as much because their users are used to just interacting with the command line interface. But if you talk to any uh, Windows developer or, you know, Windows user, they're used to looking at GUIs. So there's, there's system programming and then there's GUI applications. So how are we gonna make these things talk to each other? Well, the solution is definitely .NET uh, and having .NET objects represent classes within the Windows operating system, the Windows SDK, um, and having having an interface that can mess with that is awesome. So it's going to be used for kind of gluing together the stuff, the system programming, and the Bash or and the GUI applications. Very cool, very cool. Uh, another thing that this thing talks about. There's one having a shell, having administrative commands and text uh, manipulation abilities and uh, administrative GUIs layered on top of the command line. Like this definitely sounds like just a, an IDE number four kind of thing, but this sounds like PowerShell out of the box, nothing crazy. But where the value add is and how this is different from, you know, command CMD, the classic CMD model, how this is different than bash truly and how PowerShell is kind of its own thing on the Windows system is, and maybe I forgot to bring it up, but like Monad 
in Haskell language is is a term that's used when it comes to like uh, I guess wrapping an object with additional functionality. I think a monad is like if you had. I, I think of monad as like just a classic object instead of having a string. You have an object with a dot value that is the string. Uh, it's just a way of wrapping stuff up. It's really popular in Haskell, which probably is why this was monad and dot net was kind of around the same thing. But anyways, let's talk about this problem. When you step back, I'm reading off the paper here. When you step back and examine what is really going on when someone uses a pipeline command like A, pipe B, pipe C, and this is in the context of bash, you conclude that the first command A did not accomplish what the admin wanted to do. If it had, the admin would have just typed A and been done with it. So the question is, why didn't A do what admin wanted? The answer is that in the traditional model, standalone executables tightly bind three operations together, getting objects, possessing objects, and outputting results as text. One of those operations does not do what the admin needs, so the rest of the pipeline is an attempt to fix that. Because the executable outputs text, the downstream uh, elements must use text manipulation utilities to try to get back to the original objects to do additional work. While the basic model is extremely powerful, its intrinsic flaw is the tight binding of these operations and the use of unstructured text for integration. This requires clumsy, lossy, and imprecise text manipulation utilities. So, uh, for all the people that use awk and said in the chat, how does that sound? Any all, all the Linux users that are out there, oh man, dude, yeah, I'm used to, definitely used to doing some crazy text manipulation to get what I need out of a data objects sometimes and then you're just you know piping raw text and making objects out of it this is definitely something that I have run into before having giant pipes of information to get that final result and um, we're what we're not we're not saying that that shouldn't be possible in PowerShell but we're saying that this happens too often too much and that why are we doing everything in text form why is all the results in text when we can have uh, structured data coming in and coming coming out? That would be huge for just uh, better better approaches to text manipulation and just parsing stuff. So we're going to so Monad PowerShell. It's going to take on new approaches to building commands, composing solutions, and management models. Cool, cool, cool. I think that um, Monad takes a different approach, providing a precise, powerful script execution engine for creating pipelines of .NET objects. Instead of piping unstructured texts, we pipe .NET objects. This allows the downstream pipeline components to operate directly on the objects and their properties using .NET reflection APIs. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what we're doing here, guys. Super important, and that is probably the, the crux of what spawned PowerShell into being the, it should be now the default terminal and scripting language used on Microsoft instead of CMD and .bat files uh, because of this, you know, inter integration they have with .NET objects. Super, super cool. And I hope you all find that interesting. So let's go down. We're not going to get into the craziness of how this all works. Um, I definitely will leave a link to the article or to this paper if you want to look at that. Because, I mean, this is really just how the scripting language works under the hood, which is kind of cool. But let's look at this value propositions of what we're getting to our end users. So value propositions for the application developers. So we're going to have a simple programming model. Uh, commands are merely attributed.NET classes. Cool. That sounds pretty solid. And for power users who want to interact with the system through command line interfaces, Monad provides a highly consistent set of commands and utilities, as well as an environment that allows the creation of custom admin tools. Definitely possible. Definitely could make custom GUI applications that interact with the system uh, and do a lot of 
a lot of tight things. Uh, be, there will be a common parser for all those commandlets and utilities, ensuring syntactic consistency and common input handling. And it's, it's saying unlike all these other shells, which is interesting. Monad provides a strongly prescriptive guidance and enforcement of CMD naming and error handling. Yeah, there is a there is a a thing when it comes to PowerShell. It's always verb uh, dash noun. If you've ever looked at the syntax of PowerShell commands, it's always get dash whatever you're talking about or set dash x y z. And when you're making your own custom functions they too want the same name they want that naming convention they'll give you some warnings if uh, you don't have the verb noun naming convention going on so they definitely have that in place here and we're going to be talking about dotnet objects instead of raw text which is very cool so let's talk about for administrators monad provides a highly productive model for learning and effective automation let's see here is based upon the born shell syntax and control structures facilitating in the Unix admins. I, I would say that the PowerShell feels a little bit more like a Unix uh, terminal rather than a CMD one. You can do LS, you can do CD, uh, you can call dir and all that jazz. A bunch of them are aliases. I think if I like whip out PowerShell real quick, let's see here if I can do that. I type in ls I can like see all this cool stuff and if I do a man of ls uh, you'll see that it's actually just get child item the aliases so there's a lot of things under the hood that are just aliased to be like uh, Unix and dir is that CMD version of it so that's kind of cool and I think man if I do like man man is that a thing get help yeah man is an alias to get help <laughs> that's all it is so for all the unix admins out there you can definitely get away with not knowing too much about windows world stuff um yeah there is a rich error model so since it's .NET, we can expose precise details of what went wrong where and when and what objects were processed and unprocessed which is very cool uh, and that's kind of that's kind of where I want to leave this guy at. Like you said, it's about it's about communicating the differences between the uh, systems programmers, people that are programming in C sharp, C plus plus, actual making making custom programs on the operating system, and then the administrators that are you know communicating with a GUI application, doing stuff with you know Active Directory. Doing stuff with, uh, like I guess, like security groups and roles, whatever things you can do on an operating system in the GUI. There's so many things, but having some sort of framework that can like glue the two together, that is where PowerShell comes into play. And it also is cool that it's using .NET objects instead of uh, just raw text, so that way we can have some better uh, pipelining, some better processing down the line. And so I hope y'all enjoyed this video. It's kind of just, yeah, again, just a history lesson of how it came to be, uh, what it came to solve. And again, I'll put this in the chat, the Monad Manifesto, but it, I thought it was a great read. It really just like, oh yeah, this is exactly what PowerShell is and how it came to be. So yeah, that'll be it guys. Until the next one, peace.